For this week's Patreon-sponsored episode, supporter Grimlockamus wanted to hear the basics on... Grimlock! Big surprise, right? The Dinobot leader is one of the most enduring characters in the entire Transformers franchise, and there have been more major incarnations of him than of any other character I've done on the basics so far. So strap in and let's go! The original Grimlock toy started out as one of the Dinosaur Robo, released as part of the Japanese toy line Diaclone in 1984. The Dinosaur Robo were all imported by Hasbro to become the Dinobots for the second year of the Transformers toy line in 1985, with the Tyrannosaurus figure being appointed leader of the team and named Grimlock. The profile penned by Marvel Comics writer Bob Budiansky characterized Grimlock as a valiant and respected warrior in spite of his extreme arrogance, which led him to treat anyone he considered weaker than him with contempt, including Optimus Prime, whose leadership he barely tolerated. From this foundation, the Generation 1 animated series and the Marvel comic would take Grimlock in very different directions. In the cartoon, he and the Dinobots were created on Earth by Wheeljack and Ratchet. Like real dinosaurs, they weren't particularly intelligent, and all famously spoke in a distinctive caveman-like dialect, with Grimlock's voice provided by actor Greg Berger. Me, Grimlock, no like orders! The team made regular featured appearances throughout the show's first two seasons, but more than once, Grimlock's arrogance led them to become a danger to the Autobots as well as the Decepticons when he refused to follow Optimus Prime's orders. The continued availability of the Dinobots toys in 1986 landed them supporting roles in the Transformers the movie, but while the film would give Grimlock some of his most famous catchphrases, Me Grimlock want to munch metal! Me Grimlock no bozo, me king! It also marked a shift in the Dinobots' portrayal, as their lack of intelligence became primarily played for comedy. This continued into the subsequent third season of the cartoon, in which Grimlock usually appeared separate from the other Dinobots, as more of a comedy sidekick to the rest of the cast. And he even received a showcase episode all of his own, in which he was temporarily granted super intelligence and built the Technobots in a Flowers for Algernon parody that Berger considers his favourite episode of the series. In their very different origin from the Marvel comic, Grimlock and the Dinobots were part of the crew of the Autobots spacecraft when it crashed on Earth four million years ago. They were reactivated by the ship's computer to battle the Decepticon Shockwave, and given dinosaur forms based on the beasts of the Savage Land, a prehistoric jungle hidden in Antarctica from Marvel's X-Men comic books. Their confrontation with Shockwave ended with them being buried in a tar pit, where they remained trapped until they were found and freed by Ratchet in the present day. Grimlock became the instant favourite character of British writer Simon Furman, who wrote multiple original stories about him and his team for the United Kingdom's version of the comic that played up their role as anti-authority outsiders. But it wouldn't be until the cartoon was winding down and the Dinobots' toys were about to be discontinued that Grimlock and his team really came to prominence in the US comic. Following the death of Optimus Prime, Grimlock's defeat of the giant Decepticon Trypticon led him to be voted in as the new Autobot leader, but the Autobots quickly came to regret their decision when Grimlock went from being merely arrogant to a full-blown crown-wearing tyrant. In an example of the cartoon's popularity influencing the comic, Grimlock switched from speaking normally to using the cartoon's caveman speak at this point. Explained by the UK comic as something he did deliberately to downplay his intelligence, since he believed intelligence was a sign of weakness. After two years as leader, Grimlock was phased out of the comic when he and the Dinobots were offlined by the cosmically powered Starscream. But by this point, between the comic and the cartoon, their role as rebellious bad boys, added to the fundamental coolness of robot dinosaurs, had made Grimlock and the Dinobots some of the most popular characters in the franchise, and Hasbro capitalised upon this in 1989 to release a new Grimlock figure. A classic pretender who used an outer shell to masquerade as a human being. Grimlock was resurrected in this new form by Ratchet in the pages of the US comic book, now being written by Furman, who relished the chance to write his favourite character again. 
In a run of stories exclusive to the UK series in 1990, Furman elevated the reborn Grimlock to a command position once again as he became leader of a breakaway faction of Autobots named the Earth Force. The same year, a non-transforming action master figure of Grimlock was released, which was incorporated into the comics by having Grimlock lose the ability to transform thanks to an infusion of the miracle fuel Nucleon. In this form, Grimlock once again became Autobot Commander for the final few issues of the series after the resurrected Optimus Prime died once again battling Unicron. In 1991, Grimlock's original toy was made available again as part of the Classics line of reissues exclusive to Europe and Australasia, and it was re-released once more in a new blue colour scheme as part of Transformers Generation 2 in 1993 with Big Grimm remaining a prominent character in the Furman penned tie-in Marvel comic. But unlike many classic characters, who would disappear from Transformers for the remainder of the 90s until the nostalgia boom of the early 2000s led to their return, Grimlock didn't go anywhere. In 1997, a new Grimlock toy was released as part of the Beast Wars toy line. And while most Beast Wars characters who reused names from Generation 1 had nothing to do with the originals, this Maximal Velociraptor was presented by the bio on the toy's packaging as the original Generation 1 Grimlock in a new body. He wasn't part of the Beast Wars cartoon, but in the 21st century, comic books from IDW Publishing and the Transformers Collectors Club would tell stories of his time-tossed adventures on prehistoric Earth. The first truly new incarnation of Grimlock debuted in the 2001 Robots in Disguise series. Totally unrelated to the classic character, this Grimlock transformed into an excavator and could combine with his teammates on the Autobot build team to form Landfill. Robots in Disguise Grimlock is the one aberration in the character's history. Absolutely every other new version of Grimlock introduced in the 21st century is rooted in the original Dinobot, and there have been many, whether they draw on the capable, cunning Marvel version, the more simple-minded cartoon character, or some combination of the two. The cartoon was most directly homaged by the Grimlock introduced in Transformers Animated in 2008 who was originally a theme park animatronic, modified by Megatron and brought to life by the power of the Allspark. Grimlock was the only animated Dinobot capable of speech, and he and his team lived out of the way on an island in Lake Erie, though they often fell under the sway of villains like Meltdown. In particular, Grimlock was once seduced into serving Black Arachnia, and his classic dislike of Optimus Prime in this continuity stemmed from jealousy over the Autobot leader's romantic connection to her. Greg Berger returned to voice a more Marvel-inspired Grimlock for the Fall of Cybertron video game in 2012, which put a new spin on the Dinobot's origins by having them gain their dinosaur modes through the genetic tampering of Shockwave. The primal impulses of his new form affected Grimlock's mind, causing him to transform involuntarily, Incredible Hulk style, in moments of rage. Grimlock disappeared in a space bridge explosion at the end of the game, but comic books would continue his story, showing how he survived to become a king-like figure who ruled over and protected what few Autobots remained on the mostly abandoned Cybertron. The fall of Cybertron's story influenced Grimlock and the Dinobots' depiction in IDW Publishing's comic books, which saw them acquire uncontrollable, monstrous alternate modes based on ancient Cybertronian reptiles through exposure to the tainted Energon of Trypticon. The team acquired their more traditional dinosaur modes in a Marvel-inspired story that saw them battle Shockwave on prehistoric Earth, which ended when Grimlock triggered a volcanic eruption that entombed them all. This unilateral action saw Grimlock become estranged from his team after they were unearthed and reactivated in the present day by government organization Skywatch. Alone, he would later fall into the clutches of the Decepticon Scorponok, who tortured him to the point that he incurred brain damage. A group of misfit Decepticons named the Scavengers found the traumatized Grimlock and took him in, caring for him and eventually helping to heal his mind. Grimlock and the Dinobots joined the world of the live-action movies in 2014's Age of Extinction, 
which introduced them as a team of ancient Cybertronian knights who had been captured by the bounty hunter Lockdown. Despite being freed by Optimus Prime, true to form, the arrogant Grimlock refused to follow his orders until Prime defeated him in combat, after which Grimlock allowed him to ride him into battle. To capitalize on his new movie fame, the 2015 Robots in Disguise series added a new version of Grimlock to its cast. But while this series notionally existed in the same continuity as Fall of Cybertron, this new Grimlock wasn't considered to be the same Grimlock as the one from the game. But that's because he wasn't originally planned to be Grimlock. Rather, he was first conceived as a red Stegosaurus Dinobot, who was only redesigned and renamed to become Grimlock in the name of synergy with the film. Robots in Disguise Grimlock is a dim but jovial bruiser who loves nothing more than a good fight. This fondness for brawling led to him being locked up on the prison ship Alcamore, but when the vessel crashed on Earth, he decided to join up with Bumblebee's team of young Autobots to help hunt down the Decepticon escapees, quickly earning their trust despite his clumsiness, impulsiveness, and the problems posed by his conspicuous alternate mode. He's most comparable to the childlike comedic Grimlock of the late G1 cartoon, like whom he even once gained temporary superintelligence. These new screen incarnations of Grimlock and the many, many toys that there have been of them haven't stopped the classic Grimlock from continuing to get new toys either, like his recent figure in the Power of the Primes toy line, which could combine with his fellow Dinobots to form Volcanicus, and which led to Grimlock appearing in Machinima's Power of the Primes cartoon, with Greg Berger reprising the role once more. Since then, another new version of Grimlock has also made his TV debut, in the new Transformers Cyberverse animated series. A new take on the character who's intelligent, cultured, and well-spoken in robot mode. You think you're tough? Well, you're not as tough as me, Grimlock! But ferocious and uncontrollable in beast mode, Cyberverse Grimlock is currently missing in action, but Bumblebee and Windblade are searching for him, and if you keep your eye on the show, he'll be returning before the end of the first season. Whew, so after all that, it should be obvious. Grimlock really is one of the most popular and unchanging characters in Transformers history, and even this lengthy episode is really just the briefest overview of his many significant adventures. What's there left for me to say except… Grimlock is king. And those are the basics on Grimlock. Thanks to Grimlockimus for sponsoring this episode. As always, tell me about your favourite version of Big Grim or your favourite Grimlock story in the comments. Like and subscribe for more from the world of the Transformers, and if you'd like to sponsor an episode of your own like this one, watch out for slots to open up on Patreon.